If you've ever been told that your FSH is too high or that you're not a good candidate for IVF, today's episode, Getting Pregnant with High FSH Understanding Fertility Treatment Options, is going to help you understand what the number actually means and the many ways you can still support your fertility. We're going to talk about the FSH. Most people immediately think poor ovarian reserve or diminished ovarian reserve, but that is not the whole story. We're going to look at what high FSH really signals, how to interpret along other markers, and what options both conventional and functional fertility can help you move forward more confidently. Excited for you to listen, let's go. Welcome back, I'm Sarah Clark, founder of Fab Fertile. For over a decade, my team and I have helped hundreds of couples improve their chances of pregnancy success, whether naturally or through IVF. We've specialized in supporting those with low AMH, high FSH, diminished ovarian reserve, premature ovarian insufficiency, recurrent pregnancy loss through functional lab testing and personalized fertility strategies. This episode is for you as if you've been told high FSH or diminished ovarian reserve and you feel like the window is closing in on you, you've had poor IVF responses, you've had canceled cycles, and you want to know what else you can do. You want to understand how a functional fertility approach can improve a quality hormone balance so your next steps feel strategic, not desperate. Thanks so much for listening. I'm so thankful that you're here. Make sure you hit subscribe or follow. And if you know someone else who's on the fertility journey, please share this podcast with them. We're talking all about high FSH and some treatment options really from a conventional standpoint and also from a functional fertility standpoint. So FSH, so the follicle stimulating hormone, it's a signal from the brain to the ovaries and people worry, you know, we've got people that have got pregnant with FSH, 60s, 70s, 80s, obviously the FSH has come down and then they've gone on to conceive, but it was really high and they were told donor eggs are their only option. I'm just thinking about Stephanie, she had FSH in the 60s. And then we worked with her, it was actually for a short period of time. Before that, she had three failed IVFs, was told donor eggs were her only option. She had a doctor reach across the table and REI, pinky swear, I'll get you pregnant. That didn't work because we hadn't worked on her health. She came to us for about five months. She decided to go in and get on the list for donor eggs. And then the REI said, wait a minute, your FSH has come down to a seven and I see some follicles in here. So she decided to proceed with an IVF and went on to have her son came back and then she had her daughter with us. This is after she was told that donor eggs were her only option. So definitely we worked on her health. So there's things you can do to bring down the FSH. High FSH is not bad per se, it's feedback that your ovaries need more support. So some contributing factors such as age. So yes, the older you get potentially, but people in their forties are having pregnancies and we need to be able to look beyond the age thinking at 40 that our fertility falls off a cliff and there's nothing we can do. We need to look at the rest of our biomarkers, looking at the inflammation in our body. You can see that high sensitivity C-reactive protein is it over one? If, you, if it is, we got some chronic stress going on and where's it coming in from? Food sensitivities, gut infections, environmental toxins, the stress we're all under. And then we start to work on that, reduce it, and then the body can come back online. Stress, so regulating your nervous system, poor sleep, I see it all the time. People are just having, people are exhausted, not getting the, the right amount of sleep. Thyroid or adrenal imbalance, environmental toxins. So all of these things can contribute to high FSH. And so when we address them, we see it come down. And so it's gonna fluctuate month to month. So you need to pair it with the AMH and the estradiol and the antral follicle count. So from a functional fertility standpoint, high FSH is your body's request for better communication between the brain and the hormones and the ovarian cells. We don't wanna be blind to it. We don't wanna not test it, but then also we don't wanna repeatedly test it because that can then be triggering. So we need to do the work and then we can test it afterwards. We're always looking at blood work before and after our testing. And so from a treatment standpoint from conventional medicine, they might wanna do a mini IVF or a natural cycle, a gentle stimulation. Some studies coming out that a lower dose medication might be better for people that have high FSH. They might wanna do a letrozole or Clomid, sometimes to encourage ovulation without aggressive medication. And you may have been told that donor eggs are your only option, but many women go on to conceive with their own eggs after they've been told donor eggs are for you and wait a minute they go on to conceive naturally you need to be able to be informed right doctors are there but we hire them and use their expertise and not just blatantly throw all our eggs in one basket pun intended and just rely on them we need to be educated and be our own advocate so making sure that your medication is individualized for someone with a high fsh or low amh looking at different protocols but i do say this all the time you do not have a medication deficiency and so changing the protocol and getting so caught up in the whole ivf world without looking at the fact that you've got inflammation from a food sensitivity, all the environmental toxins, your body does not feel safe 
your nervous system is dysregulated and we just keep going cycle after cycle and spending tens of thousands of dollars. We don't know long-term side effects. So we're not anti-IVF. We just need to deploy it at the right time. The lab can't measure egg quality, only quantity. They tell you it's your FSH is high and your AMH is low and they tell you you better run and panic. And that's not how we receive our child. So from a functional fertility perspective, our fab fertile method, everything we're doing here is to improve cellular and egg health so the ovaries can respond if you do decide to do treatment or through natural conception. So we're not just looking at the hormones, we're looking at the entire environment. That's gonna influence your egg quality. Implantation success. So we see many people, the retrieval has been canceled or the transfer, we did the transfer, it didn't implant or it did implant and we had pregnancy loss. And so we need to be able to look at our biomarkers and make an informed decision because this piece, this can be devastating, right? This impacts every aspect of your life. I'm giving you a whole bunch of information here, but like this is difficult. And so we need to give yourself some grace and actually be kind to yourself. And this can also be very difficult on a relationship. Intimacy can be all about baby making. We're going to say, hey, I want you to go gluten free, kick out a parasite and wait, let's look at your genetics and making sure that your methylation pathways, adding more B vitamins is equally as important for us to recognize the trauma that you've been through, the stress you're under that your body doesn't feel safe to procreate. And right now, your body is prioritizing you <laughs> to keep you alive, and there's a reason. So we need to dig deeper and see what those issues are. And reducing inflammation, oxidative stress, balance your blood sugar. If you're on a roller coaster, your blood sugar all day long, that can impact your hormones. Improve your nutrient status. I see a lot of people that are like low nutrients. So we need to boost everything up and support the ovarian energy and cellular repair and then address those hidden sources of stress in the body infections you got an, a parasite a worm a bacterial infection an overgrowth of bad bacteria that could be why this is not working that impacts the health of the eggs and the health of the sperm toxins are exposed to it's not about putting yourself in a plastic bubble here but reducing all your exposure from the glyphosate in your food to the pesticides to the herbicides being able to select organic toxin-free products getting rid of the plastics making sure you use a water filter air filter if needed not all at once because that can be stressful but kicking out fragrances and looking at your personal care go to think dirty or the skin deep database and on the skin deep database you want to a score under three. Sephora is now filled with all this clean beauty. It's a huge push to be able to not slather chemicals all over our body. I think a lot of us know this. You probably read all the fertility books telling you this, but this is impacting both sperm and the health of the eggs. So we slowly make these changes. It's not about beating yourself up. It's each day make changes. So the infections, the toxins, food sensitivities, send me a message at hello at fatfertile.ca, subject line 10 day, I'll send you the elimination diet so you can figure out to take out the top allergens for 10 days, systematically reintroduce them, see how diet impacts your body. It is not about you going carnivore, keto, vegan, can tell you how many people are vegan and I'm like, they're not getting enough protein, there are too many carbs, their blood sugar's on a roller coaster. I get it. My parents have been vegans for 40 years. And so, you know, they're healthier than their peers, but also they have a lot of nutrient deficiencies and skinny little, anyways, they're in their eighties. And now my mother doesn't like to cook anymore. She loved cooking vegan. You can do it properly, but then you do dirty vegan, dirty keto, or you're just having vegan pizzas or just junk food. And so we want you to eat whole foods, fats, proteins, fiber. The diet can impact our gut health as well as stress. And then all the little bad bacteria comes in, overgrows, and then we wonder why this is not working. So we need to work on all those hidden sources of stress. So some key labs to look at here, looking at the full thyroid panel, looking beyond the TSH, yes, your REI is gonna want it below two, but we need to look at the free T3, the free T4, your antibodies. People are like, I've had my thyroid tested. It's normal. We don't want normal, we want optimal. We need to look at the full panel, look at your vitamin D. We see this low all the time, we look at 60 to 80. We wanna look at your ferritin, I see it all the time. <laughs> the ferritin is too low. You're anemic and you're doing iron infusions and iron patches and then you're wondering why things aren't working. Well, yeah, that's a huge clue. It's not just you doing an iron infusion. Maybe you've got gut issues, you're not absorbing it. Your insulin's on a roller coaster. If your A1C is over 5.5 or 5.4, that can then impact your cycle health and inflammation in your body and yes, stress. 
can impact your blood sugar. Homocysteine, inflammation, so the methylation pathway. So we do see that MTHFR gene variant, so 60 to 80% of the population have it. And we see it as a theme with low AMH and high FSH, making sure that you're taking a methylfolate prenatal. Maybe you're not absorbing your B vitamins. I see the B12 should be between 800 to 900, and I see it either too low or it's too high because you're not absorbing it. And so looking at some additional testing, we can do that stool test. So we do like the GI map. Do not do one-off testing. You'll throw good money after bad. You won't get a proper protocol. This is multifactorial. You need to look at this in a targeted manner. We start with food, stool, genetic testing, all your biomarkers, plus your partner. You could be passing infections back and forth. So we need to be very mindful about a DIY saving money for IVF. You don't want to be saving your money just for IVF. We've got to work on your health. You can either get pregnant naturally because the, because the majority of us can, or when you go to IVF, you can improve the chances of it working. They sell it in packages of three for 60K. Obviously there's clinics that offer it cheaper. Usually it's not just one that it takes and none of them are looking at your, some of them, I shouldn't say none. Some are saying go keto. Some are saying take some acupuncture. Some are saying don't smoke weed or reduce your coffee and your alcohol. Those are basic generalized recommendations that yeah, you should not be doing any of that. You don't want to be smoking. You don't want to be smoking weed. You don't want to be drinking alcohol. You don't want to be drinking tons of coffee. You want to work on your stress and do some meditation. But those are generalized recommendations. Their focus at the clinic is to give you medication <laughs> to force this. Obviously, it's been around for years. I can see both my kids with IVF. We are not opposed to it. We need to de determine when to deploy it and really make an educated decision of when you're going to bring it in food sensitivity testing. Your body's under attack even by a seemingly healthy food. I got people intolerant to lettuce. I'm not about being intolerant to lettuce for the rest of your life. We heal the gut, then we can take out some of the inflammatory foods. And then as we heal the gut, we can bring most of them back in, except if it's super high in a food sensitivity test. Even if you're like, I have no digestive issues. I feel totally fine. But maybe for you, you've got skin issues, dermatitis, acne, hives, eczema. Maybe you do have gut issues, burping, bloating, diarrhea, constipation, all common but not normal, huge signs. Or you've got acid reflux or GERD. Maybe you've got H. pylori. You're not absorbing any of the nutrients and you're passing that back and forth. And maybe you've got joint issues where you're like, oh, my joints just hurt. Everything hurts. Or mood issues. You want to claw your partner's eyeballs out when it breathes. And so irritability, or you've got brain fog, or you've got ADHD, or you've got any kind of mood issue. The neurotransmitters are made in the gut. And so we need to be able to address the food sensitivities, work on the gut health, and then we can potentially bring in a Dutch test to look at your adrenals, if they're flatlined. And I feel fine mentally, but maybe your body is exhausted after all the stress. That was me. I'm like, I don't feel stressed. <laughs> of course I was stressed. Of course I was. Just because I'm not going to be crying in a corner, I'm probably going to be punching the corner, beating it up, doesn't mean I'm not stressed. And so we need to be able to recognize that and to give over the research. I know for me in times of stress, especially with health, I go on a crazy research road. I see myself doing it. So we need to give the research over to someone else so it's not on our shoulders, especially if you're like a hyper vigilant kind of person. You're like, I gotta check the protocol, over check everything. And then you're always on high alert and your body can't rest because you don't trust anything. You think they're doing it all wrong, but that's you taking on the burden. And so that's why we have a team with an OBGYN with a functional medicine background, functional nutrition practitioners, fertility mindset coaches, putting this all together. This is a unique program, been around for over a decade with a team approach, cross-functional, being able to ship tests worldwide and help you figure out what's going on and not just focusing, in this case, on the high FSH. We need to know it, but just focusing on it, waste our time. And then do genetic, so looking at that Dutch testing, we can look at your estrogen, your progesterone patterns, your adrenal function, your cortisol rhythm, and then being able to look at all your hormones. And we like fertility trackers such as the Mira or Anito to be able to look at your hormones and be able to track your cycle. Genetic testing, like we talked about that methylation pathways, maybe you do have the MTHFR gene variant. So either one SNP or two, so homozygous or heterozygous, and being able to see how your body detoxes hormones, manages stress and converts folate, which is all key for egg and embryo development. So if you have some of these gene variants and we do see that methylation one where you're not absorbing all your B vitamins, we need to be able to just do a customized protocol based on your genetics. And then the vaginal microbiome, we work on the health of the gut microbiome and then the vaginal microbiome. I can't tell you many people that have a whole podcast episode on your plasma. If you've got infections, 
you're passing back and forth, that's a clue. If you've had bacterial vaginosis, UTIs, if you've got any of those, for sure, we need a vaginal microbiome test, but basically we do it for anyone on the fertility journey. And especially if you have had pregnancy loss, it is key. You could have an inflammation in there and that's causing it not to implant or causing loss. And this back it up for the genetic side of things, that test is excellent for anyone that's had pregnancy loss as well. And so then we can be able to customize this, prevent gestational diabetes. Some of these things are serious, right? Prevent preeclampsia and really improve pregnancy outcomes. What's been missed? And then so looking at the nutrients in the supplements, if you've got to support high FSH, I think a lot of us know to take the CoQ10, Bequinol, so it's good for the mitochondria, the eggs energy, taking a methylated B vitamin, don't take the folic acid. I think a lot of us know this, but make sure it's a methylfolate because if you do have the MTHFR gene variant, we want to support hormone detox, methylation. Take omegas, magnesium, vitamin D, zinc, selenium, that can reduce inflammation in the body. We need to be mindful. So we start with the methylfolate, the omega, the CoQ10, the magnesium glycinate, the vitamin D3, K2, and the probiotic. Those are the foundational for you and your partner. He's not taking the prenatal, he's taking a multi, but he's taking all the rest of it. And then when we get all the tests in, then we customize the protocol. Otherwise you could just have expensive pee. And then also for high FSH or low AMH, they might recommend DHEA. Has anybody tested the DHEA? Typically not. They just give it standard of care. Off you go. Here's your DHEA. Bye bye. And they never tested it. Maybe you didn't need it. Maybe yours was fine. Then you got some greasy skin and acne and greasy hair and wondering why you didn't need the DHEA. Or maybe yours is low, but why is it low? We need to dig deeper. So it's got to be monitored. And then looking at you're getting consistent sleep. You're having your three meals a day. You're reducing toxins. You are working on your nervous system regulation. So we want to blend both worlds. Conventional medicine is what functional medicine is. It's conventional medicine 20 years in the future. It literally took my dad in because my dad's dealing with a bunch of health issues right now. Took him to the doctor with my mom and my dad's 85. My mom is about to be 81 and he's got swollen feet right now. He's got catheter. He's got a pacemaker. He was totally fine now. He's falling apart. Anyways, and the doctor came in with a bunch of issues. We can only talk about one issue right now. I'm like, we're looking at him in a silo. This whole body is connected. It's just outdated medicine. We're still doing this? Only one issue. Why? What a waste of time. Then you go off to the different specialists and you chase this thing. Meanwhile, it was stress. They didn't look at all the biomarkers. You've missed something. We don't look at the body in a silo. And in this case, in the fertility, we're just focusing on the FSH. Oh, there's nothing we can do. No, we need to be our own advocate. And at least three to six months before you go to IVF, targeted, work on your health, and then decide when to deploy, if you need to deploy, IVF or IUI or medicated cycles. Maybe you do want to test your follicle count. That can be helpful to, to catch a ovulation and reduce inflammation. And then when your FSH goes down, then the ovaries are going to respond better. And then the conversation shifts from your eggs are poor quality to your eggs are improving. And so we don't make decisions based on the FSH alone. We've got to look at your AMH, your, your follicle count, your thyroid, your inflammation, your gut markers. If you've had multiple failed IVF cycles, it's not about tweaking the protocol. We need to look at our health, not just keep going. Oh, I'm going to add in a little more medication. That's what they're going to do. You need to look to see what's going on with your health, with your biomarkers using testing, or maybe they just do the same protocol over and over again. So it's time to pause that and take a giant. Le it's not a leap backward by working on your health. This is a giant leap forward. There's some questions to ask yourself. Have you addressed it, your stress? What about your sleep, your digestion, your detox support, your nutrient status? Do you even know them? It's not just about, oh, my vitamin D is low. I've been supplementing. Why is it low? The question is always, why is it low? What's con connected? If you've got anemia, you're on Synthroid for your thyroid. Now your lipids are off, your cholesterol, your triglycerides, maybe your blood sugar. I see it all the time. It's all connected. So we need to be our own detective here and hire someone to help you figure this out. Otherwise, DIY, you just waste a bunch of time and money. And then before you go on to do a retrieval, you've got your body in the best shape. And so the high FSH doesn't close the door. It's a signal for you to realign your strategy and create better conditions for egg development and hormone communication. And basically it's a message, not a verdict. There's options, both medical and functional combining it. We're not against IVF, but we need to work on our health first and support egg and hormone health. And so understanding your options here, because the REI is not going to talk about any about this stuff. They're not trained in it. It's not their fault. If we go and ask our REI, Hey, does any of this matter? No, you don't need any of that. We just asked the wrong person and that's okay. So we need 
need to have a team with you at the center. You know your body best. And so if you want to get my eyes on your specific situation, send me a message to hello at fabfertile.ca, subject line fertile, and we'll talk about options to help. Take care.